Hey there, it's Renee. Buckle up because I'm about to spill the beans on my epic seven-day adventure with the fabulous homeowner. If you're late to the party and haven't caught the series yet, worry not. Just click right here to dive into the magical realm of decluttering. But wait, there's more. I'm just not giving you a sneak peek. I'm taking you on a roller coaster ride into my inner workings of my decluttering brain. On day seven, I embark on a Goodwill donation extravaganza. I made more trips than a delivery truck bidding farewell to a mountain of stuff. If that's not enough excitement for you, stay tuned because I took on the challenge of power washing the back patio, front sidewalk, and driveway. So grab your popcorn and settle in because we're diving headfirst into the action-packed world of power washing in the second part of this video. Now let's address the camera issues on that fateful first day. It was like my camera decided to take a siesta, leaving me in the dark both figuratively and literally. Little did I know that the camera decided to pull a sneaky move, capturing the action in a way that only Picasso would appreciate. It was very blurry for the first few minutes. Ah, the adventure begins. I boldly step into the lion's den, or rather the bonus room, a space frozen in time and untouched by human hands for a whopping seven years. I kicked off things by playing the game of spot the obvious trash. Trust me, it was a riveting sport. Once I had cleared a path in the midst of the dusty dunes, I got to work. Always go with the easy stuff first and pick up all the trash. The books were boxed up quicker than a magician disappearing act. And of course, I came prepared with boxes galore to pack up those literary adventures, books on books on books. It was like an unintentional stair-stepper workout, lugging those boxes down the stairs. She handed me a laundry list of requests like it was a secret recipe for decluttering. Find her wedding album, honor the train set for her son, rediscover the elusive family Bible, and hunt down the teddy bear that her husband's brother had until he passed away at the age of nine. First, the wedding album surfaced, and her reaction was a touchdown dance of a worthy celebration. The homeowner tackled the paperwork like a pro. I kept passing her boxes like a hot potato at a never-ending paperwork party. Talk about a stair-climbing workout. I must have made enough trips up and down those stairs to earn a gym membership. I left behind a treasure trove of cassette tapes for the sun to explore. There would be a time capsule of family memories in there. Who knows what nostalgic gems are hidden in those plastic cases. Then I ventured into the attic and stumbled upon a train set and it was like opening a time capsule complete with a surprise guest appearance by mouse droppings. I probably should have donned on a mouse detective costume with a Sherlock Holmes hat and a magnifying glass. Maybe next time. Dust hung in the air like confetti at a rock concert. The picture here is the view from my daily marathon walks down the hallway, where I played the role of eternal messenger shuttling back and forth as she made critical item decisions. And in the master bedroom, there sat the chair of legends, a seat that had witnessed 10 years of comfy history where she had spent her days and her nights. Every day I made sure that she had all her essentials before I went home, saving her from the stair climbing Olympics. We took a sentimental stroll down memory lane with a few tears and heavy sighs along the way, but she powered through it. She had a knack for storytelling and boy, did she have some stories to share. They were awesome. I played the box Jenga game, 
making sure not to topple her with the avalanche of cardboard chaos. I even threw in a surprise load of laundry for that extra decluttering flair. While sorting through her clothes, she reminisced about her wardrobe's greatest hits during the work days. The homeowner has always been captivated by the beauty of these little innocent bugs, the ladybugs. For some reason, she started calling her dear friends who served on her staff, ladybugs, as a term of endearment. These friends were very special to her, and they knew just how much she valued their friendship and their work they did in ministry together. In the end, the closet alone yielded over 40 bags of clothes. I made sure she had easy access to everything from closet treasures to kitchen goodies throughout the entire decluttering adventure. I secretly fixed one of the wobbly safety rails in the master bathroom by placing a clever makeshift support underneath. She didn't know, but she was delighted when it stayed steady. The linen closet was like a time capsule of forgotten treasures. These are the rooms I spared for my decluttering frenzy. The two bedrooms and dining room barely got a decluttering workout because they were mainly filled with furniture. I stumbled upon some vintage treasures hidden in the closets. Anyone remember Wonder Wizard? It's like stepping into a gaming time machine straight from 1978. The spare pantry was a treasure trove of garage items and food for the church pantry and tools for her one lucky friend. You got it. I started with the low-hanging fruit, the trash. The kitchen gave my camera a workout with those high cabinets. I multitasked by playing camera person, cabinet excavator, and ladder acrobat while decluttering. I took on two and a half bathrooms plunging into the abyss beneath the sinks and exploring the mysterious drawers. It was like they were all in on a bathroom conspiracy playing a game of Deja Vu Bathroom Edition with me. Time to declutter the garage and make way for the Firebirds' heroic comeback. 
It's like decluttering with a side of horsepower. The church was on a mission to give the Firebird a makeover and send it off to a deserving new home. It's a car rescue with a holy twist. Over the seven days, I walked 89,475 steps, 39.92 miles, climbed 155 flights of stairs, and burned off 3,242 calories. But on a more serious note, Here's an update on the homeowner's health and situation. She sold the house to finance her assisted living for several years, and she is now residing closer to her son in another state. Six weeks after moving to the assisted living facility, her hip crashed due to erosive osteoarthritis. Shockingly, she no longer has a femur, and she admits that she's been in pain for quite some time. The doctor stated she should have addressed this issue as far back as three years ago. Now she's bedridden until a custom-made hip can be created for her since there are no bones left to attach a regular hip to. It's certainly not the retirement she had envisioned as a widow and as she has faced many losses in this just this first year. Her only source of hope is holding on to her faith in God. Fortunately, she has her son and her family close by for support. Thank you all for joining me on this journey. I want to remind you that if you or someone you know is facing a similar situation, reach out for help. Whether it's friends, family, or professionals, there's always support available. She kept a handful of boxes for her new treasure chest, ready for the assisted living adventure. I discovered the secret passage to the attic and the roof, and let me tell you, it's a two-person quest up there. Sadly, I couldn't manage to haul anything down from the attic. That task was reserved for her son when it was time to sell the home. I'm so glad I could help this family. Thank you so much for watching. I get it, this part might not float everyone's boat, but if you enjoyed the decluttering journey so far, feel free to hit the like button for my recap video. All right, folks, we reached the grand finale of decluttering indoors. Time to take the adventure outdoors and dive into some power washing action. These surfaces haven't seen the cleansing magic of power washing since the early 1980s. Speaking of the great outdoors, let's rewind the clock about 10 years to a bike mishap I had. If I hadn't been sporting my trusty helmet, I might have experienced a not so graceful introduction to the pavement. But wait, I did hit the pavement. Fortunately, that helmet was my guardian angel for my noggin, and now with my spiffy new e-bike, I'm all about that extra layer of protection. Safety first. I got my hands and my head on an Exnito helmet to put it through its paces. Exnito's helmet is certified NTA 8776, which is rated to protect riders up to 28 miles per hour or 45 kilometers per hour. Standard bicycle CPSC certified helmets are only required to be rated for up to 15 miles an hour. And even if you don't have a faster electric vehicle, it's very likely you're exceeding speed simply by going downhill. Snedo's helmets can be considered a hybrid between bicycle and motorcycle helmets. They're lightweight, below one pound, and a total of 10 air vents. The helmet has greater coverage in the temple and back of the head than bicycle helmets. Xnedo chose to use both a thicker form and a higher grade of outer plastic shell to ensure superior protection and the lightweight feel to their helmets. 
Exnito offers a lifetime accident replacement. They can contact Exnito and they are happy to replace for them a new one for free. No fancy endorsements here, just some good old Walmart pool essentials. The helmet has front and back lights to make you visible to the public and motors both during day and night. The front light is not strong enough to act as a headlight to fully illuminate the driving path ahead. It is designed though to ensure that you are seen while riding your bike. You can buy the helmet at a discount price of $135 when entering the coupon code less mess at checkout. It saves 10% off the listing price. So shipping is free for U.S. customers. And don't forget to use the code less mess at checkout to receive 10% off your new x -Nito helmet.
Thank you.
Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe my channel for more inspiring stories. Until next time, take care and happy decluttering.